Is our is our guest still there? Uh yeah. How you doing? <laughs> doing pretty good, Jim. How you been? Oh, I'm celebrating uh Tumor Day. I think everybody's <laughs> everybody's doing that on the internet at the moment. It's a it's a great celebration. Uh you know I I'm just wondering what kind of magical fucking uh, cancer medication McCain was on because a day after he said he stopped taking it, he's fucking dead. It must have been, it must have been some mystical fucking alabaster potion that asshole pulled out of somewhere. <laughs> well, you know, usually when they say that, okay, you do know that they're gonna probably die soon, but it's usually I don't know, maybe a couple of weeks, maybe a month, two months. He literally died the next day. It is a little. Maybe he was just holding off until that last moment. He had he had more wars to shill, so I was just hoping beyond all hope that that he could still stay alive to do so. I don't know, but <laughs> it's like he walked out of the hospital after they turned the chemo machine off and died in the fucking parking lot. I've never seen anything happen that fast. It's unreal. Uh, what, what? How would you describe uh, Senator McCain's legacy? I, I, what legacy does he really have? He failed as a presidential candidate, and he was an, uh, you know, a so-so fucking senator, right? I mean, what, what is, it, is they're going to give him like a glowing eulogy or something? I, I don't know what his political career really looks like. I mean, yeah, he had a military career. Yeah, there was a prisoner of war thing, but as a politician, is anybody like going to build a monument to this asshole? No. But he was a maverick, Jim. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was a he's a maverick, all right. Yeah, he's a magical maverick who's dead now and nobody's going to remember him in four years i don't it's just it is unreal how they promote this guys like zidane said though he was the maverick and you know he, he stood up and he campaign finance reform which of course got struck down and doesn't mean anything now uh the mccain fongo bill got struck down by the supreme court and then okay so he voted down whatever the health care what was that 2017 I was like, he's a maverick. He's willing to go against his party. But every time he, he really got challenged, uh, so during the Tea Party wave, he was yeah. getting challenged really hardcore. And all of a sudden, nobody was more you know right-wing than John McCain. If, if you look at that election, he was going out there, we need to build the wall, send yeah, the immigrants all, all, back. All politicians are the same. He was, he was yes. doing a, an appeal to whatever base he thought could get him in uh, a higher office or keep him in office. He's, he's a career politician. He's like every other career politician. The party doesn't even fucking matter. You know, their their conservative values or their their liberal values, all that kind of shit. Whatever. He just wanted to be in office. They're all the fucking same. Well, um, I you know, I went to and probably a mistake, but I went to <laughs> I went to college to study politics. And uh I remember this professor. Some of the professors suck, let's be honest. But this this one professor and he was a liberal, but he explained it, he said, You can pretty much um just boil everything down, all political decisions, all elected officials' decisions is, how is it going to affect them getting reelected? Nine times out of ten, nine point nine times out of ten, you can just look at what they're doing and what they're saying is, you know, and, and just boil it down to, they're doing this because they're worried about getting reelected. Now, McCain, of course, he knew he was going to die last year, so I guess he just... You know, was doing whatever. <laughs> you want you want good politicians make every, make a, a law for all political offices of every level is just one term. That's it. At least then you'll get something interesting because nobody's worrying about re-election. Uh, they can go in and do crazy shit. You know what I mean? That might be more entertaining. But I, career politicians, I don't trust. They're a dime a dozen. It really doesn't matter what their affiliation is. They're all the same. Well, the yeah, and I I said the exact same thing earlier in this program. I mean, it's not even a party issue. It's it's both parties are pretty much cancer, and and the people who go to Washington to just live there and make that their career. Uh, that's not really how the country was set up. They didn't expect to, oh, just you know what? I'm gonna quit my personal pursuits, quit all my business stuff, and just go be a career politician. It was more of, you know, the the elites who had the time who had the, the leisure time due to their success in life already would go for, you know, a few months a year. Well, of course, they, of course they didn't think they're going to be career politicians. Those yeah. motherfuckers live to like 40. By the time, by the time they could run for office, they were already had one foot in the fucking grave. <laughs> they figured shit's going to be like this for uh, another couple hundred years. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? Fast forward to now. And you got assholes that have been office for 20 fucking years. It's ridiculous. And literally die in office. Like, I mean, you know, I, I think there's an argument to be made that, okay, you know you're going to die a couple years ago. I, I don't know, a year and a half ago. 
maybe resign. You know what I mean? Maybe resign. Let their uh, an election be held. Uh, go spend that time with your family. What the fuck are you doing in Washington? Say I was a senator and they told me, ah, oh, you got, you know what, Ralph, you got about eighteen months to live. Why the fuck would I want to be in Washington D.C.? That just well, that's, seems that's very where they selfish. Sacrifice, that's where they sacrifice all the children of Moloch. I mean, he needs to he needs to give blood to his dark lord to live longer. That's probably that's the true. magical cancer treatment. I didn't think about the Illuminati councils. The uh, Illuminati. Yeah, I'm sure Hillary was down there with a hacksaw helping him along. A little spirit cooking. I didn't I didn't, I didn't consider that, but yeah, possibly. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, we talked about the uh, the Malo missive. What did you uh, did you think about that? I think he sounds like an arrogant bitch. What do you What do you mean? What is like? I'm gonna. Uh, how would I hold a different opinion of how he's acting with that that little missive on his Facebook? Uh, why would I treat that differently than I would Jordan Peterson? Right. Like I came on Jordan. I, I came down on Jordan Peterson for a couple of things, but one of them was it felt like he was just kind of being a money whore, and the, like the Milo kind of comes off like that in that in that that post. I mean, I get it. He can spend his money however he wants to, but you know, this woe is me shit. Give me more attention. Give me more money. You should be thanking me. That's just, Nobody, not, it's yeah. not a good, it, it, it's, it's just, it's just, it rubs you the wrong way. Like who wants to go to bat for that? And like, he's, there was a follow-up. Did you see the follow-up post? No, I didn't see the follow-up. Is that on your Twitter? I didn't see the follow-up. Uh, no, that is not on my Twitter. Somebody linked it to me. Uh, I'll, I'll just read it for you. It's shorter. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, when left wing store or when left or I'm sorry, when left wing stars stumble or go through periods of reevaluation or repositioning, their fans rally and get them through. At precisely the time right wing stars need a bit of support, the conservative base gleefully abandons them and shits on them. I'll be here for another 30 years. I'm never going away. But when I am once again on top of the game, fighting for free speech and freedom and strong borders and Christianity and against the murder of unborn children, I can tell you this. The conservative base will have been more of an obstacle than an asset. Yeah, um, the whole thing is just, uh, it's just off key, right? Nobody likes somebody whining and say, why are you not out there supporting me? Look at what all I've done for you. It sounds like a fucking pompous, you know, parent from a movie or something, you know what I mean? Or some pompous benefactor, like, why are you not out here supporting me? Look, look at what I've done. It's just... It's just bad. Especially- well, I mean, are we, are we supposed to start writing thank you notes to people yeah. that played a, a role in Trump's ascension? Should I go? Should I go get a, a fucking Hallmark card for the Mercers and be like, "Hey, thank you so much for giving millions of dollars to Bannon and Milo to get some shit rolling. Thank you, multimillionaires, <laughs> for having a role in that shit." Here's here's a Hallmark card. Congratulations. Yeah, here's I'm a little really, ass pat. I'm really glad you you spent all that money to elect somebody that you thought would be more beneficial to your to your interest. Wow, you know, wow, I'm glad you did that for me. Uh, and like you said, I mean, the Mercers, if, if you want to write a thank you, no, it'd probably be the ones. But also, uh, the thing is, Malo, yeah, I mean, I, I would say he was a player for sure, but um, it's kind of egomaniacal to to say that you had the, like a huge hand in getting him elected. I mean, yeah, you played a part. Well, but... I, I, I think there's a distinction here. Like, ego's always been a part of it. Like, Milo has always been Milo, right? And that's part of his appeal. He's mm-hmm. he's got a he's got a you know a, a big image that he projects out there. He loves controversy. He courts it. That draws in a lot of people, right? That gets people buzzed. So he goes to college campuses. He does his tour. People like it. He's outspoken. He's doing his flamboyant shit. Whatever it appeals to a certain demographic. But there's a difference between that kind of uh, you know putting your image out like that and having that kind of an ego, and then doing the woe is me, you owe me shit. That's what comes off is just it's going to alienate a lot of people. No, don't. I mean, who am I to speak, right? I'm just some lowly little fucking YouTuber with a couple hundred thousand subs. This guy's sitting on a Facebook with like three million followers, right? And who knows how many other fucking platforms like Instagram or whatever else. So, I mean, he's definitely built something up. I, you can't deny that. And he hmm. obviously knows what he's doing because he's got a large following. But I've seen people go down the path of this kind of posting and it never ends well. And it's going to be one of those things. I'm going to get shit for this for like the next year, but we'll, we'll see how it plays out. Give it two years. Well, it's just... And yeah, Milo's definitely built something, but if you look at his influence on, on like the debate and just in terms of being mentioned, um, the, the, usually when he's mentioned now, it's, it's in a negative light. I mean, we're talking about now, it's not, you know, positive, uh, ever since the CPAC dethroning, uh, he, he's been on a downward trajectory, 
Um, his his website had a lot of money. I can only imagine. Uh, maybe I. Maybe well, this how? Uh, yeah, I'm kind of surprised you didn't talk about Alan Bakari. I mean, if we're going to talk about Milo, let's talk about Bright True. Martin. What was going on there? Well, you know, the ghost writing, the not sharing credit, yes. having other people write his stories, and then cutting yes. them out of the byline. Like well, that, know, that shit that's that's been yeah. public now from leaked emails and other stuff. Well, I you know I know a lot of those people. Uh, Margaret McLennan, the the whole birth control article. She wrote a lot of his articles. She wrote a lot of his tweets. I mean, I was in I was in the Slack uh, for momentarily until I got booted, like I talked about earlier. Um, but yeah, he had he had a ton of ghost writers um, hanging out in the Slack with a gay yeah. man. What are you doing? <laughs> Listen to this shit. I, I got was, I got kicked I was out hanging early. out with Milo in the Slack one day. I got and... kicked out. Of... Now you know what? What about your stream with Milo? And uh, well, what's Wait, funny, motherfucker. Is... I went on a stream with him. I'm not. I'm, we're not sending each other kisses at night on <laughs> Skype. All right? There's a fucking difference. <laughs> okay, fair enough. But you now, know are what? you talking about? Are you talking about the stream where I not only came up with the idea but the name for the charity that he ran? Um, no, that, I'm, t- I'm talking about talking the one about? with, with you and Sargon and Malo. And the funny that, thing that is, was, that was the stream. I yeah, told no, him, call no. it the Yiannopolis privilege fund and make it a fucking grant for white males. Now, the funny thing is, is I was actually with both of them earlier in that night, but I had to catch a flight back from London. So I, I would have been on the stream, but, but the flight saved me. So that's, that's what kept me off of that. See, Jim's a good guy. I come out with a good idea, and then somebody else fucks it up. <laughs> and <laughs> so then, like... well, th- that's one of the you know one of the stories of his downfall, though. So he did that grant, and I thought it was first off. I mean, it's a troll, right? I mean, he's doing it to troll people. It was but... a brilliant idea. It would have been funny as shit. Like it just the concept of it. It's what fu- is funny considering the climate at the time. Yeah, it's just funny to do, but say you actually cared. I mean, it's still a worthwhile thing, even though it's a troll. Like, I mean, if you if you actually do it, carry it out. But then there were so many problems around it. You know, is he keeping the money? Even when they came out and named the people who got the grant, you couldn't verify them. We still don't really know what happened with that grant, to be honest. Uh, yeah, that's the only thing I didn't follow along with. I know that uh, somebody was like a, a accountant or some was it Margaret or somebody else. There was like a fight between him and somebody else who was uh, helping him run it. And so Margaret McLennan is who you're talking about, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like uh, questions about the bookkeeping and shit like that. And then Milo was like, "Well, don't you know? Don't worry about it. I'm gonna pay out the grants and it's gonna be fine." And that's kind of the last I heard of it. So I don't know what happened with it. So they, um, they, t- you know, she, he had a falling out with Margaret, who's a friend of mine and uh, so I was you know I was friends with most of these people he had a falling out with her kind of disassociated um, then he turned it over to uh, Janet Bloomfield another person that I'm that I know um, and they they announced a list of recipients but it wasn't really verifiable so I don't even know now somebody's saying he blamed Baked Alaska. Can we really blame him for doing that? I mean well, the state of Baked Alaska isn't he walking <laughs> dogs in California for a living right now? Like what happened to that motherfucker? I haven't heard from him in a while. How's Nobody he, has. Yeah. How's he even living in California? That's what I want to know. Oh boy, baked. God, maybe you should have listened to me, huh, fag? Huh, next time, take the advice. <laughs> uh, speaking of people who have ended their careers here on the kill stream, uh, Monday, Matt, uh, buying subs. Uh, thoughts on that? I I, th- I I I can't imagine he'd be that dumb. It's probably somebody having a laugh. <laughs> probably. But... But... I, let's you know I, I was saying this uh, earlier today on social media people that do that kill their channels because what ends up happening is it makes your channel look worse if you've got a dude who's got like a small channel he's got like a hundred subs right and every one of his videos has got like 90 views that means he's got a huge portion of his fucking audience watching even though he's got minimal subs and then you look at the likes and the comments and you can tell people that are subscribed watch his shit but then you look at some of these big accounts with like 100, 200, 300, 400,000 subs, and they're getting like 20,000 views and barely any likes or comments. And you're like, what the fuck is going on here? And it just makes your content look like shit. Sure, you've got like a half a million people that are subscribed to you, but nobody's watching. And if the people that are subscribed don't even care to watch your shit, why would I subscribe to watch it? Well, it's just, yeah, you can have a ton of subs. You can have, you know, 100,000, 500,000. But if you look at the numbers and, Nine thousand views. I mean that that just makes it. Oh, like people said, were asking me to name names earlier. I'll throw a few out there. Some black know. guy, three hundred thousand subs. Go look at his fucking views. If it's not a video of him talking about something that's black related, twenty thousand views, thirty thousand views. Look at other channels like um, 
uh, I, I think like one of the weird ones, and I, I can't explain this, and I'm not saying that he's technically buying subs, but something's going on. Uh, look at Undoomed. 300, 400,000 subs. He's getting like 17,000 views a video. Uh, Black Pigeon Speaks hidden way below the mark. I, I don't know what's going on. What do all those people have in common? Starts oh, with a C. Is is it the uh, is it the septic community? No, no, no. Starts with a C. The con- starts with a C. No, no. Can we be discreet about this? Oh, candid. I understand. Oh, yes, weird. yes. Weird. Oh, I didn't think about that. So, yeah. I, I, so what would be the? I, I guess is is it just about status? They think oh, I get that play button. I have a hundred thousand. Who the subs. fuck lives their life with status on YouTube? What a sad <laughs> fucking point well, if you reach in the life that you're living. <laughs> Who I you know I, I've never met anybody. Thank fucking God. And I don't know how I'd, I'd probably punch them if they walked up to me in like a bar or a restaurant and like, hey, my name's John, and I'm kind of a big deal. I got three hundred thousand people that watch my let's plays on YouTube. Like. Fucking kill yourself. Put yourself on the ground. Let me ride a lawnmower over you. Like, what? What are you doing? How have you reached this point? Yeah. If anything, you should be. If you're able to, you know, make a living or whatever off YouTube. You you want maybe, me to be impressed? Maybe be, come, yeah, yeah. Come back to me when you're sitting at like tens of millions. Then maybe you've got a right to brag. But you know, a hundred thousand, even a million at this point isn't really. Uh, it's a drop in the bucket compared to like. The, Every big number that used to be big means nothing now. It's so quick. The internet moves so fast now that the guy that makes a channel today can be at a million subs in a month. You know, yeah, so it, like it's just a weird metric to use. It's not even just that. It's, um, I mean, maybe be a little humble. You know what I mean? Because there are people out there working jobs that are, you know, very rigorous. Uh, maybe maybe they're working manual labor. Maybe maybe they are in an office, but it's, you know, wall-to-wall bullshit. That fucking term, your, your chat's using it, influencer. That's the, yes. I hate the marketer that came up with that term and uses it because it it's like fucking honey in their ear. And they really believe it when you tell a YouTuber they're an influencer. They're influencing people. Like, a shit post influences people. So, like, you put it in perspective, right? <laughs> Uh, they they think they're such big deals. Oh my god, my big YouTube channel, and I'm an influencer now. Yeah, I'm sure your your fucking super hot take on the new Mario Brothers game really <laughs> lit the world on fire. You fucking retard. Like influencer. that's something to write home about. Yeah, influencer community. I fucking hate all of that. Well, it kind of goes to their head because I mean, I guess you know they're like, well, I remember I was, you know I had a 200 views on this video, and now now they're calling me an influencer. They're trying to give me you know and trying to pay me you know candace trying to pay me um it can i mean i guess it can go to your head if you're a fucking retard all right uh let me read these uh really quick uh did i did i i don't think i read this one barrett shaw super chat holy fuck this feels like i had a stroke i'll just at what the fuck i'm talking about mccain's favorite Aaliyah song was age ain't nothing but a number R.I.P. Senator McRib. Polly Prissy Prince says, can you get Jim Goad as a guest? Also, fuck McCain. Yeah, Jim Goad is, has been recommended a few times, and uh, I'll see what I can do. Adam Raleigh says, do a seance to interview McCain. Could be fun. Chakai says, can we just have a minute silence for the tumor whose valiant sacrifice must be remembered? Mike Thomas says, gas democracy, fascism now. Follow God's path or Phil Tesla's wrath says, McCain was really weak on abortion, just like every Republican in the last 10 years. Robert says, Jim, show your YouTube flag page. Show my YouTube flag page? Well, I'm on the Ted account yeah, right now. The back guy. Yeah, the back, the back up. Um, Adam Riley says, how does Milo not have a Patreon? Uh, I don't know. He, he doesn't need one. I mean, he, he's, you know, like, he got money right to start his own website. He yes. gets speaking fees for doing stuff. I'm sure he gets promotion fees. Like, he's making a good amount of money. I can't imagine that he would need a fucking Patreon, the level he's sitting at. Plus, that was kind of the thing that I was talking about earlier. You know, he he tried to be like, woe is me, and oh, I've sacrificed so much for you guys. Well, it's kind of hard to feel sorry for a guy when you're posting pics on Instagram and Facebook of your jet-setting lifestyle, and you've got, you know, $500 champagne and, and fucking all this. Well, you know, well, your what designer was the line shades. about, what yeah, was the line about security? That's the one I didn't get. Yeah, hundreds of thousands hundreds of dollars in security, yeah, yeah. That that seems a little bit like I I don't I mean I get it Milo Milo has a reputation but I don't think he needs fucking security guards to go to a sushi bar in London. I don't either. Uh, 
uh, it, it seems a bit inflated. I mean, maybe, you know, at certain events or whatever, is he going to have to hire security? Yeah, maybe, but um, I think uh, I think it's a little bit inflated. Uh, Stephen Thomas says, Jim, please, please jill, drill Angry Joe like you did Matt. Well, the, people have already talked about it. Okay, yeah. What what take am I going to add? I'm, I'm busy with furries and reset error right now. That's the shit I'm focused on. I, I, you know, I'm enjoying so myself. So why don't you talk that. about that? Also, I wanted you to talk about the Maddox thing because I don't even know what's going on there. But somebody Yeah, no, somebody, somebody said that uh, I guess like one of his uh, – I don't know if it was like a close associate, if it's a head mod, a top donator, or all of the above, but it's like a convicted pedophile. And uh, they had all this proof for it and shit. And the, this was a guy that was just going after uh, Dick a lot. And it was like a, a massive Maddox fanboy. I, that's all I know. Like, I, I don't, I just heard about this like two hours ago myself. How did these pedophiles, you know, of course they're scum, they're pedophiles, but you, you do have to almost admire their dedication into weaseling their, their way in. Like, a, 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 it just seems like it always comes up. I cannot tell you. How many times over the last two or three months of Dan, maybe you could estimate a number. There's pedophiles everywhere. Not just stories in the news, but so-and-so's mods. Oh, it's like a fucking trend. Yeah, I mean, I was yeah, doing crazy. the normal shit I did, and it was like every other week there was some fucking thing with uh, a new pedophile getting outed somewhere. You just can't... Uh, I don't think there's been a kill stream in the last, what, two, three weeks that we haven't talked about one. Yeah. Every single time. And matter you of fact, you guys need to stop being pedophobic. <laughs> all right, that's the problem. We need to be well, tolerant. This is sexual orientation, right? Oh, There's yeah. a solution to it. Yeah, it's called the pedophilic solution. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mine's quicker. It takes less fuel. But okay, whatever. Mine's flashier. Yeah, it's flashier. Make it splash. <laughs> then you got to scrape them off. I'll have to that. scrape that shit off. I'll be. Somebody else has to do that shit. Christopher Morris says your sub count is becoming less and less relevant every day. And this is pretty much what you said on Twitter uh, already. He says YouTube's slowly trying to push aside the concept of subscribers. Yeah, well, that's the thing. And you'll hear uh, influencers talk about this, but this is actually true. YouTube adjusts its uh, algorithm, I guess. I, I don't know exactly what they call it, yeah. but they adjust it about once to twice a year. So it resets what they put on trending and, you know, top stuff and, uh, first search results and all that kind of shit. And people get confused. They see, oh, well, he's got a large sub number and he's on trending. That must mean that he got there because of the sub number. No, it just means that he had more eyes on him. And that's what got the video activity that got it up front. Not because he had a lot of subs was he put at the top of the queue. They they change shit around all the time. Uh, Goat Balloon says, Senator McBrain. <laughs> Kyle Neal says, let's all thank Cancer Chan. For Posterity says, what does Jim say about German self-genocide? About what? German self genocide. Let me see. Do I still have that story up? Hold on. I'll see if I can find it. Uh, the German president came out. Hold on. I have to try to pull up. Okay. Here, here it goes. German president president declares there are quote no native Germans. We are a nation of immigrants. That's what the German president said. Germ who's the German president? Uh, F F Frank Walter Steinmeier. Now, who who allowed him to give a comment? Isn't it only Imam Merkel that's allowed to give comments <laughs> about uh, the direction that Germany's going in? So yeah, I think the German president is like in a lot of these parliamentary democracies is mostly ceremonial. Uh, but yeah, I guess I guess he's been quoted uh, in the media recently. Germany's a nation of immigrants, so there there are no native. Yeah, native no, yeah, Germans. that's great. Yeah, let Europe become a nation, a bunch of nations of immigrants. We'll see how it works out. See, I'm fine letting idiots do stupid shit because in the end, it just proves them the wrong. I can play the long game. I can sit here five years and wait and watch. doesn't matter to me. I'm not the one who's going to be getting raped by Somalis uh, or North Africans or Iranians or wherever they're fucking importing them from today. Uh, that's going to be Germany and Sweden and all and France and England and every other fucking place. Let them replace themselves. Let them change the demographics. And then let's see how it turns out for them. You know, it's all well and good to say that we can hold hands and have fucking uh, kumbaya sessions and everything's going to work out fine. Wait till they're the majority and they're calling the shots and then then come talk to me when, uh, you know, you're getting just brutalized every day. I mean, look at how uh, Sadiq Khan is at the London mayor. Like, yeah, Sadiq Khan, yeah. Anytime something, I swear to fucking Christ, go look at his Twitter and watch this. Anytime a news story happens where somebody gets assaulted, he doesn't want to address who did the assault. 
he wants to ban what was used in the assault. If <laughs> like it's a, a car. fucking knife, yeah, yeah. yeah, if it's a knife, get rid of the knife. If it's a moped, get rid of the moped. If it's a car, get rid of the car. If it's truck, get rid of the truck. How about you get rid of the fucking immigrants <laughs> that are using those things rather than the implements themselves? Maybe yeah. that would be a better strategy for the fucking mayor of London to consider. <clears throat> well, pretty soon you're going to run out of things to ban. That, that's the thing. Uh what about See, no, uh, you, oh, go you, ahead, you, go yeah, ahead. yeah it, it's not a black pill okay sometimes to save the patient you got to excise a few things sometimes you got to cut a fucking limb off to save the rest of the body so if europe needs to be that limb for the rest of the world to wake the fuck up it's not really a black pill is it it's just a a very poignant example to the rest of the world of why you need to pull your head out of your fucking ass so let them go down this road to destruction and when everybody sees it play out They'll be like, holy shit, we don't want to be the next Sweden. We don't want to be the next Germany. We don't want to be the next France. Look what happened to them. So you're saying they're more valuable as an example to everyone else. Make an example of them, yes. Let the idiot that wants, I mean, it's a dumb guy at a college party that's like, hey, I'm going to drink a fucking gallon of motor oil. Let's see what happens. Okay, dumbass, let's see what happens. And then he dies and everybody's like, I guess I'm never going to do that, huh? <laughs> an object lesson. Uh Okay, Alex Jones. Oh, who, you know, who doesn't love Alex? And, uh, I, I, you know, the, the question that's burning in my mind right now is, this guy doesn't eat soy, and he filters his water, so we need to find out what is creating this lust for cock. Uh, now, <clears throat> I'm assuming, now I've seen the video too, we talked about it last time, it, it, I don't, it looks 100% legit that he, he literally got busted with with tranny porn on his you know history tab on his phone that he pulled up live on air uh what to even say about it i mean it, it's a massive self own i just I, I don't know you know maybe we need to take a different approach to this and i'm going to go I, i'm going super tinfoil so you ready for this yes yeah, go ahead Okay, just feel, just hear me out on this. All right, feel me out. All right, Alex Jones is an agent for the globalist homosexual agenda. Hmm. Alex Jones loves tranny cock, and he wants other people to love tranny cock. So every piece of advice Alex Jones has ever given you about how not to be gay is actually the opposite of what you should be doing. If he tells you don't eat soy, eat it by the ton. If he tells you to filter your water, drink it straight from the fucking river. Okay, because the dude telling you how not to be a queer turns out he has a love for dick. So you shouldn't be listening to anything that Alex Jones tells you about how to retain your heterosexuality. He's he's part of the problem. He is he's controlled opposition hidden behind a glory hole. <laughs> what does super male vitality really do? Oh, it may it has a lot to do. <laughs> <laughs> it has a lot to do with male vitality. Maybe it's just vials of semen, and this is his big inside joke. He's been training you to get used to the taste to come. Do you think he'll? Do you think he'll address this? Uh, I <laughs> the porn star has. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was. I, I don't think. I, I don't know if I can actually pull them up on air. I, I see the tweet has been deleted. That that uh, where she's just like, or she, he, whatever you want to call him. It but, well, but it I, got a lot of fucking responses, uh, linking to clips of Jones screaming about gay frogs. <laughs> 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 what the fuck is going on? People kept sending gifts to him playing with guns. <laughs> they got really freaked out. Perfect. Uh, now maybe maybe you know he talks about 1776. Will will commence again? Maybe maybe that means something else. Maybe that's code for something else. Hey, you know, and the funniest thing too in regards to Jones is he'll be fine. Like oh, yeah. you'd think that this was this would affect him. It really won't. He's he's been the asset of jokes for like a decade. This is just going to be another one of them. Like he's almost impervious to it at this point. He he'll keep trucking along regardless of how he addresses it. Uh, if it was anybody else, it would be a big deal. Like that's the difference between him and like a Kurt Eichenwald. Like Eichenwald tried to be serious and didn't want to be made fun of, and then he's watching tentacle porn with his kids. Whereas Jones, his people are always making memes about him and joke videos about him and compilation videos and laughing at him. So, it, like, it, what effect is more of that going to do? 
Well, and he does have a talent um, of just kind of rolling with whatever joke about him is going on. You know what I mean? So he'll just laugh at it. He, he seems to be self-aware. I don't know if he'll actually address this one. If, if he's self-aware and he has a really good sense of humor, he should do like a very special video or broadcast where he's like, you know, where he's like, I, I want to address the issue of tranny cock. And I, I want him to have like an iPad in front of him and I want him to pull up. He's like, I have a speech prepared. And as he pulls up the speech, it's nothing but tranny porn. He's like, oh, sorry, that's the wrong tab. Whoops. Like that would be the that would be the way to address it if he has a sense of humor. Whoops, oh, my mistake. All right. A couple more things before we let you go. Uh, by the way, appreciate you coming on. Uh, first off, the the furry uh, deep dive that you're doing, are you, are you willing to? Uh, oh, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've noticed a lot of like crossover between certain communities. Uh, they're all fucking crazy, uh, hormone taking, uh, furries that are into like the pronoun shit and just really bizarre stuff. And uh, I know you. I think your Twitter is where I first saw it, but it was going around everywhere. The the uh, furry NASA intern who uh, who got fired. yeah. Somebody said they made they made the news like that yeah. made the news. Um, some local news broadcast. Yeah, yeah. I uh, saw that. Or I, or I yeah, I think there's a cl- there's a clip of it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's fucked up shit. Uh, and that and then I've been looking at uh, Reset Era too, which is just uh, that site is it, fucking cancer. It's Reset? it's horrible. I thought like, uh, is it Waypoint? There's there's another one that's really bad. I think it's run by Vice. It, is uh, Reset Era? Yeah, Waypoint the forum is Vice. That, yeah. that sp- uh, spawned out of uh, what is it? Neo Neo Yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Well, I mean, yeah. what did you expect? Well, yeah, this all came about because uh, Evil Lore, I think that's what it is. Evil Lore, uh, the admin. Trevor Malco. Yeah, Trevor Malco, yeah. Right, right. Uh, another, uh, like an old story about him being uh, like gropey with a chick at a bar came out, right? And guess what, and, Jim? That had been around for years, dude. I wrote I, oh, about I know, that years and years ago, and it just didn't get, you know, it got picked up by, you know, people who watch this show and, and well, it caught, like that. It but, caught fire. Yeah, it caught yeah. fire on NeoGaf, and yeah. um, they went ape shit. And yeah, I was laughing about it because he he built that community like these oversensitive, hypersensitive people. He had like nurtured that, and they were eating them alive. So he finally was like, "Fuck it," and he cut them loose, and they all left in mass. A lot of his mods all left in mass, and they're like, "We'll make our own site." So it, it's like the worst aspects of NeoGaf, the most hypersensitive people from NeoGaf, all got together and made their own forum, and they're still eating each other alive. That fucking thread about um, cyberpunk. Uh, 2077 or whatever, a hundred bands in one day, just in that thread. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess the thing that just made me chuckle the most about Malka is that that stuff had been around for years. I had put this stuff out on my site. Other people had, you know, talked about it, and then all of a sudden one day it, you know, it caught fire on his own site, and they're like, "Whoa, wow, look at this new discovery." Uh, you know, we have to leave. We have to go start a new site. This guy's this guy's disgusting. How how can well, we did, be here? Did you see the uh, the bands that they were handing? Like, I'll just read out a few for you yeah, to give on. you an idea of what Reset Era is like. Yeah. These are the bands that they were handing out in the cyberpunk thread. Uh, these okay, banned for downplaying transphobia, equating rules against bigotry with book burnings, peddling and downplaying transphobic rev- or, uh, rhetoric, inflammatory drive-by, trolling a sensitive thread. Dismissing minority concerns, dismissing LGB or LGBT concerns, community hive mind trolling, peddling disinformation, dismissing the harm of transphobic behavior, downplaying dis or a downplaying drive-by posts in a sensitive thread. Like they're out of their fucking mind. A sensitive thread. Okay. Yeah, they actually called it trolling a sensitive thread. <laughs> It's the most honest ban I've ever read in my life. Trolling a sensitive thread. You can get banned for trolling a sensitive thread at Reset Era. Sensitive thread. Okay, so speaking of Cyberpunk, um, you did a video on Cyberpunk, which we actually played here on the stream, and we'll, we'll do a couple more talks, and I'll let you go, because I don't want to keep you all night. Um, what did you think? Uh, of course, you already kind of said in your video about them apologizing, and it was, it was a pretty mild joke anyway, but... What did they say? Uh, did you just assume our gender or whatever was their tweet? Yeah, it was a fucking helicopter. Yeah, it was, it was a, a joke from like three years ago. And it was yeah. a response. It wasn't even like a – it was a, a reply. So it wasn't even publicly out on the right. timeline. But right. they, they dug through to find it to get upset about, yeah. Uh, 
it's just well and then did you see the the fucking Eurogamer interview that followed up with that where they got to sit down with the devs and the questions and shit they were asking and it's all about gender fluidity and well how, how you know <laughs> so the thing is okay so you can be male or female you know they're already being quote-unquote inclusive with that and the guy is, is fixated on what what if they're gender fluid and they they want that represented in the game how how, how are you going to go about that i mean that that's that's the main thing they're talking about the whole interview not not what the game's even about or you know the gameplay or what can you do in the game other than uh, how can you represent gender fluidity yeah they were bitching about the presentation of your create uh, character yeah. They, like they were, they weren't just upset about like gender fluidity okay. and can you be on a spectrum between male and female. They were upset about the like the build. They're like, well, the the builds are labeled male and female, and they look too male and female. What if I want you know like a feminine penis? Like that's the level of <laughs> shit they were getting into with this Eurogamer interview, talking about pronouns and uh, all this other crazy shit. And this dev is probably like, what the fuck is this? Uh, it's just, uh that's that's what it's come down to though you know uh, let's talk about gender fluidity uh, i mean look it's been it's getting worse and worse i could imagine that um you know in the next few years uh it, it's so this has been happening for you know we talked about it forever um i guess first it was all females in games it, you we can't play as a female in call of duty you know that's a big problem let's let's change that uh battlefield you know you see how they're getting fucked um, and now it's oh you know what gender fluidity. Well, they they always presented like oh it's this trans issue and oh my yeah. god the trans it, the community they're so sensitive. That's why I think that Crunchyroll story was interesting. Uh, like if you if you ever gotten a look at what the majority I'm not saying all but the majority of the trans community looks like they're all fat balding dudes <laughs> in dresses. Like I'm that's not somebody I'm gonna be super sensitive with. It's a fat ugly bald dude that's like forty. And didn't get any fucking attention, and this is how they get attention. Fuck that noise. You're not going to shit my video game up because your fat, dress-wearing ass didn't get enough attention on the internet. And most of them, I mean, most of them don't even play the game anyway. They're just, they're just starting shit. And I see, um, I saw this tweet the other day, too, uh, about their, uh, their anime takeover. Some of these, uh, some of these faces here who are, are all of a sudden really interested in, in anime. Oh, yeah, just drink it in. Yeah, just <laughs> drink it in. They're anime now. That's who's going to be right there. They'll do a shitty crunchy roll thing, and then when it fails, they'll blame sexism or some dumb shit. Whatever excuse they can pull out of their ass. Well, their trailer uh, video has no comments, nothing like that. No likes, yeah, yeah. It's it's the middleman syndrome. It's the same shit that happened in gaming and comics and everything else. You get all these outsiders that don't really have a fucking place in whatever the entertainment medium is come in and say that they have uh, the voice of the people on their side. And they come in and they fail a few projects, but they're like, no, 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 no. The majority really does agree with us. See, the reason it failed is because everything's so toxic. And they become like these these little gatekeepers, these little middlemen, like the game journalists were, you know. It wasn't the consumer or the devs bitching about uh, all this crazy fucking white privilege shit in video games. That was the fuckers on Kotaku and Rock, Paper, Shotgun. It's just the same shit in a different medium. That's what these people will end up being. It's that colored hair. That should be the first warning sign. Like, look how many... I see deep purple pink and red hair just in that one picture alone they've got the problem glasses on it's like the perfect cliche the super problem glasses that one fat bitch in the middle <laughs> ah. um okay so here's a super chat and normally i would not even i probably wouldn't even bring this up but um alt height put out a video the other day he, he mentioned you he mentioned me uh he mentioned worski um robert with a super chat uh and he's he super chatted us before uh, including in this this very stream, I don't, I don't know that he's exactly a fan of yours because he was the one that said show your flags. I guess he thinks there's going to be some kind of like, got you there or whatever. I, I would, I personally would be all, all, very all surprised. Hypes that? No, 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 no. This is what the super chatter all, all hype. Okay, so what all hypes video was? Um, so the first part was you know kind of about uh, race realism and I guess kind of a black pill on on that type of thing as far as um uh so the so the whole video was kind of geared to go at richard spencer i guess but the first part wasn't necessarily explicitly so uh but one of richard spencer's uh i guess points was that uh the more that uh, there's a white awakening 
um, that uh, people, you know, white people specifically, obviously, will uh, naturally gravitate towards white nationalism and uh, being, you know, woke, quote unquote, on that issue. Uh, and he mentioned you, he mentioned me uh, as examples uh, that that weren't woke. And uh, he, he, I guess, uh, what he was citing and some of his commenters were citing was uh, uh, our our choices and and uh, and mates, I guess you could say. Uh, so Robert with the super chat, uh, said Jim's with an Asian, he's part of the problem. Uh, and that, I don't know if, I don't know that all hype, uh, said that, uh, he, he was kind of more mild in what he said. Uh, he was saying that these people have been exposed. Um, they have, uh, you know, whatever been part of the, the discussion and that they're still not white nationalists. So therefore Richard Spencer is, is, uh, full of shit and that he, he's wrong about his, about his thesis that was all hypes take um so yeah so is, is there a question in there no i mean he he made a <laughs> statement i i don't know like I, you've probably heard that before though right i i, I don't understand uh first well, of all I, I don't I, I don't put myself out as a white nationalist though yeah. i mean it's, it's pretty open that i'm dating an asian chick right It'd be kind of hypocritical for me to be promoting a white ethno state and then be banging an asian girl with <laughs> that well, I mean, I'm not, I'm not hostile towards white nationalists. I'm not really hostile towards any political ideology, to be honest with you. Um, you know, like the alt right or white nationalists, I found to be funny. I mean, they've been good at trolling. They've done funny shit online for like the last three years. And I like funny shit. So why would I be hostile towards them? Just be, just because somebody online is not an ally and advocating for the same fucking shit that you advocate for, doesn't mean that they're an enemy either. I mean, I'm not I'm not treating them like they're there's some target. I'm not like, oh my God, these white nationalists, they're, the, they're, they're fucking fur fags. I need to go scalp them today. You know, it's not, it's not part of my agenda. But yeah, I'm just, I'm just a dude that makes videos on YouTube that fucks an Asian chick. I, mean, <laughs> dude, I don't, you don't want me promoting white nationalism. I'll do it more harm than I would do good. Everybody would be like, that guy's a hypocrite. He's fucking an Asian chick. Well, yeah. And I mean, I guess, you know, if you're part of the problem, I would be part of the problem too. I mean, my, my wife is Pakistani, so um, I, I don't know. I, I think what what you said is um, just because you're not, you know, 100% on board with every single thing that a person's saying doesn't mean you're an enemy to them either. Uh, so I, I think it's hard for See, some people this, to See, this has always understand. been my philosophy. I, I like the idea of the Internet being like this battleground where people can just fling shit at each other, and I want them to have that opportunity. And I've noticed that like a lot of the people on the right, uh, especially like the white nationalists, don't get that opportunity. They get banned and kicked off platforms. But I, I take that same fucking approach to people on the left, too. Like, I think Destiny is a dumb little midget, but I didn't like him getting banned from every platform that exists because now he's not around for me to watch him fling his shit. Like, I want to see all these ideologies go head to head. I want to see that fucking battle take place and let the best man win. You know, I think and there's nothing more pure than that, is there? I would agree with that. And also, you know, I mentioned Janet Bloomfield as an aside earlier, but she actually wrote a post years ago. Um, and she said the appeal of Twitter is pretty much that it's almost, you know, in a digital space, but it's, it's like the old school, at least it was, um, you know, Roman type Coliseum where pe people go on to Twitter to see fights. They don't go on there for love and, and handholding. They want to see the, the, uh, you know, each extreme or even not necessarily extreme, just different ideologies, different, Different people dragging people. They want to it, see it, shit talk. About, that's that's the appeal of Twitter. Yeah. yeah, it's about charisma. I mean, that's any movement is about charisma. And on the internet, it's not who's right; it's who's funniest. Yeah. And the alt right and white nationalists have been, like I said, fucking funny for like the last three years. They've been pretty good at making fun of the other side. And I, I brought this up with the uh, uh, who's the guy that got AIDS recently? Uh. Was it Pause you, blogger? You talking about Pause <laughs> blogger? <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Did you see that? Did you? I don't know if you saw that portion of the. Uh, well, yeah, but... no, I, I brought this up with him. He's like, "Well, what should we do?" I think he was talking about Antifa, and my basically the gist of what I told him was, "Be funny. If you want people to even pay attention to the shit that you want to tell them, you better start being funny and stop being so up your own ass." Yeah, he actually uh, came on the program the other night and. Uh... So what's the, what's the story? The, I, I, people have been kept spamming me saying Bronze Blogger has AIDS, and at first I thought it was a joke, but no, then he actually, no, the, he actually they sent me AIDS, clips yeah. of him on here. So did he get infected recently? What happened? No, he said he's had AIDS for you know ten plus years, um, and I guess he went on a stream with uh, Mike Enoch and uh, Sven. 
uh, I guess Finn slash Jesse from, uh, you know, TRS. And, and he kind of like, I guess he got flustered and admitted that. And so some of those guys were on my stream and they were kind of joking about it and alluding to it. I thought they were just kind of fucking with him. You know, I didn't know that there was any basis in fact there. And so a few days later, I don't know, maybe a week later, he put out a tweet and he's, he said, yeah, you know what? I am, I I do have HIV and I'm not, you know, ashamed of it and this and that. And so once he put out that tweet, we started talking, I mean, that made it a, you know, confirmed, you know, public type conversation. So we started talking about on the stream. And you're and sure I, he's not fucking with you? Yeah, I'm, I'm fairly certain he's not. I mean, okay. who can say? I haven't seen his, <laughs> I haven't seen his cried. test results. I mean, he could be, uh, but he, he seemed to be pretty, uh, pretty serious about it. Like, I, I think he probably does have HIV. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's so I messaged him and I ended up getting him on the stream and we talked with him the the other night, uh, for about an hour about about him having. Well, um, I heard the burn last. I, the, the the some of the stream segments I watched. I think it was Dan. Uh, I, yeah. I don't know who it was, but it was funny. Yeah. Was like, oh, you said I'm not brave enough to suck dicks. Well, how's that working out for you? Yeah, that was that. fucking yeah. great. That was so good. Uh, I could hear, I could hear uh, Jade laughing from a room <laughs> over. <laughs> from a fucking room over. That was some good shit. Yeah, that was from when uh, I actually came on. To, you know, Zidane does the post mortem, which is like the after show for the kill stream, and uh, I went on there, and you know, I was a little drunk. I know, shock, shock of shocks. And uh, one of the things he had said to me is like, "You're not brave. You're not brave enough to suck. No, you're not man enough to suck a dick." And uh, then it came out a couple weeks later that uh, that he has HIV. So maybe it's good that my bravery was lacking a little bit. But <laughs> was, so was he was he spreading his positive? What was his message about AIDS then? Like, oh, is he going to be like an AIDS spokesman now or something? No. Or what's his thing? So he came on here and basically, to me, it sounded like he was giving a sob story of like, oh, why is everybody making fun of me? Because I have AIDS. Everybody's calling me pause blogger. Uh, it's not funny. Uh. <laughs> Crying like a little bitch the entire fucking time. And I was like, the fuck? This dude just, sh all he does is stir shit up and tries to talk shit. And now when people are making fun of him, it's this fucking crying bitch story. Well, yeah. Not uh, do you think he's going to become a gift giver? <laughs> oh, we, I th we dude, talked I, about that. Yeah. yeah, I think that's what he wanted to do. He said that wasn't a big thing, and that that was some yeah, know, small, small sect of. Oh, of it's like, just a small subsect. As he walks yes. around with his toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I was, you know, I tried to just play it straight, I guess to say uh, on the that's interview. The only way to protect yourself from <laughs> yeah. the camera playing it straight. <laughs> I tried to play it straight, and then. uh uh, you know, I had, to, I had to step away or whatever. I was like, okay, Zidane, go ahead, take it over. The first thing he said was, what's up, pause? <laughs> and then he just lost his shit. He just absolutely lost his shit. Um, Somebody in your chat said he tried to say it had nothing to do, him having AIDS had nothing to do with being gay. Yeah, he, he did say it has nothing to do with my lifestyle or anything. And I was like, bullshit. He did and and also. Reading, no, go I ahead, read him statistics ahead. and shit, and he just didn't know what he was talking about. So, yeah, and another thing he kept saying was, uh, uh, I guess you know heterosexual sex was dangerous, and you could catch you could catch HIV from from uh, oral sex, which is not. I mean, oh, oh yeah, so dangerous. You should have said, hey, you should have asked him who patient zero was. Ask him about the gay flight attendant that gave the world AIDS. Let's see what his answer to that is. But you know what's funny is he finally admitted. So I kept, you know, there are no confirmed cases of catching um, HIV, you know, de whatever developing it from oral sex. I mean, even the most hardcore paused, you know, San Francisco. Now, is that expert. true or is that just a, a man's brilliant idea of how no, he's still going to blow job when he has HIV? No, that's <laughs> no, no, true. Baby, it's never happened. You're there's totally no, there's no 100% no confirmed case of catching AIDS from, or excuse me, HIV from oral sex. It's pretty much, I won't say impossible. Oh, actually, you, you know who has a really good video on this? Who? Um, Hold on, let me. I want to. I want to get the name right. This guy does these medical videos now. He used to do like LPs and stuff. Um, but he actually has a video. Uh, he got a lot of shit for this. People, I guess, people thought he was really super liberal, and uh, they were wrong. <laughs> let me <laughs> let me let me find it. Hold go on. Ahead. Oh, Chubby Emu. Okay, if you go to Chubby Emu's channel, uh, C H U B B Y E M U, he has a video about AIDS and statistics and how you get it. And he, he just brutally goes down the list and he talks about blood transfusions, and everything else. And his, his end result is 
uh, it's gay men having butt sex. Is yeah, that's what I'm saying. Sex. And th that's the thing. And I, you know, I kept, you know, kind of hammering on that. I was like, there's no, you don't really, you don't catch HIV from, from, from oral sex. And, you know, he was kind of saying, oh, Rob, whatever. I mean, just look at the studies, look at the experts. You, you don't have to take my word for it. Just Google, just Google what I'm saying. And, uh, I finally got him to admit that he developed HIV from anal sex. He flat out admitted that on stream. And then he made a big show about saying, well, of course, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't, a you know, I wasn't receiving, you know, I was, I was, you know, I was, uh, well, the pitcher, point, not the catcher. What, is it, what is it? What does it matter? At that no, point, but you he, got made it, he made a big deal. He made a big deal about saying, well, I wasn't the catcher. You know, I was, I was, you know, I was the one f fucking not getting fucked, you know? Um, and that didn't seem, you know, it seemed a little off, off key uh, for somebody so woke. I mean, I guess what he's saying, well, it, is it, it more it, shameful? It, it, yeah, I guess it is. I mean, it is actually, but. <laughs> well, no, no, because usually it's the recipient because they're getting tearing. That's, that's yeah. how it's transferred. So did, well, does he have herpes? Does he have sores on his cock? And that's, he got blood. Like uh, now I'm well, even, now I've got an even more horrific image in my mind. Of, is, uh, a large sweaty man thrusting <laughs> with his herpes infested cock inside a paused asshole. Thank you for that, Ralph. That's going to be a great fucking well, image for tonight. It is possible that he was, he was full of shit. Maybe, maybe he actually was receiving. Oh, he was fucking the shit. <laughs> no, I mean, he got, he got wedged <laughs> up in there like a backup pipe. <laughs> All right. On that note, on that excellent note, uh, what, what do you have coming up? I know you, you talked about you're, you're going to do some videos soon and, yeah, yeah, I got, I, I got one. Uh, hopefully, it'll be up tomorrow night, Monday morning at the latest. Um, I'm not giving it away, but then uh, just uh, back onto kind of like a regular scheduled stuff. Just, just whatever interests me. Like I said, I, I've really gotten tuned into the uh, the furry shit, and there was a series I was going to do on furries, so I might just jump into that with their like fur affinity and ink bunny accounts and shit like that. Jump in with. I'll probably get probably get banned, <laughs> especially you know, with the ink bunny shit. But whatever. Before you go. Um... You you caught a strike during the the Monday mat uh, brouhaha, right? Uh yeah yeah uh, like uh, three hours after the stream. So yeah I know I'm sure it wasn't related, but uh, what what uh I mean do you ever do you ever worry about you know maybe they they could take you off this platform and and do you have any plans for if they did do that? It's just a fucking YouTube channel. I just go make another one. <laughs> it's not like they're a finite resource. I'm not mining them like boulders, Ralph. There's plenty of people <laughs> that are fucking out there if you need them. If shit happens. You gotta, you gotta get a different account. You gotta get a different account. What are you gonna do? So let me ask you this: Say they didn't let. So say they started banning you on site, saying you're ban evading or whatever. Um, do do any of the alternatives bit shoot any of those look appealing or? Yeah, I mean, BitChute seems like it's coming along. I like their their interface and you know, kind of like um, yeah, their user interface and just the way it looks and how to navigate the site. It, it's pretty solid. Like I, I I really liked VidMe and then that fell apart. I loved so, VidMe. I don't want to get my hopes up on BitChute and then something happens to that because I know they're getting fucked with by uh, payment processors and yeah. the banks and just like the uh, back end financial stuff. But uh, BitChute seems solid. Seems like it could do really well. Yeah, that was my thing, and that's that's one reason why I'm just a little a little hesitant to to jump both both feet in because Vidme was great. I mean, I just loved the design. I, I loved what they were doing, and then all of a sudden, they weren't around. <laughs> they weren't they, around they, anymore. Yeah, they could they couldn't afford it uh, partially because of advertisers, and I know they had their own payment plan built in. And I God, I'd love to talk to the Vidme people and just see if what happened to Bitshoot and what happened with Patreon happened to them too. I'm I'm starting to getting a, a sneaking suspicion that a lot of these sites that are either trying to do payment processing or uh, social media or uh, video delivery are having pressure applied from larger corporations like uh, you know Mastercard and Visa and stuff like that, and uh, it makes me wonder if it's not just you know like uh, the Jacks and uh, those kind of people that run the huge platforms that are setting like the policies, but if the outside money people are stepping in for some agenda and saying, no, you can't have this if you want to use this service. No, we're not going to give you ads if you don't do this. Uh, no, we're not going to process those payments if you don't remove this person. It almost feels like they're scared to talk about it. It feels kind of like a lava bit situation where the guy couldn't really come out and say, the government's fucking with me because they throw his ass in prison. So he had to wipe well, the fucking Well, he had a secret out. fucking subpoena from a fucking you know, national security court, and, and he literally they were going to throw him in jail if he talked about it. And you talk about... Um, 
uh, what you just said. I don't know if you're familiar with the Freestarter stuff, but Freestarter um, said that they had, and that's Chuck Johnson's thing that he had going on, that he had an agreement. I think it was with, yeah, it was with Stripe where they told him privately, yeah, we'll, we'll process all your payments. We'll, you know, we'll do everything. Just don't reveal us to the public. Don't tell anybody that you're, uh, you know, working with us behind the scenes. We don't want to be identified with it publicly, but we're committed to free speech, blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden, one day they contacted him and said, look, even though they've given him from the owner of the company, you know, one of the co-founders slash owners, um, one day they just contacted him and said, yeah, we can't, we can't do that anymore. Sorry. It doesn't matter what we said. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's, it's dead. There's no, it's nothing you can do. Uh, so I do think that there's a lot. Yeah, of it just it feels like a lot of the little guys and the people that are starting to come into prominence are getting shut down. And I know people like to give Conte a lot of shit, and some of it rightfully so. But I'm starting, like I said, I, I just have a sneaking suspicion that he's getting pressure applied to him like a lot of others were. And I think everybody's just scared to say, yeah, this is what's going on because the entities they're talking about are so large that the backlash would be on. They wouldn't be able to survive it. Well, they wouldn't be able to do anything else after if they went too hard on it. But yeah, I, I would agree with that. And I think there's a lot more there. And I think there'll be even more there. But thank you, Jim, for coming on. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, sir. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. No, I love jumping on at midnight to talk about gay men having ass sex. <laughs> thank you for that. Help. That's fucking great. Well, Glad enjoy, we could help. Enjoy yeah, your yeah, yeah. Send me another invite when you want to talk about gay sex. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right, man.